Welcome to 463, homework set number 8. This homework set looks at linear observers. So the problem we're dealing with is the Cartan pendulum system. Suppose I've got a Cartan pendulum, the dynamics from homework set number 4. Suppose I can only measure position and angle. Come up with a stabilizing feedback control law. Well, that's a problem because with what we know with pole placement, I need full state feedback. If I can only measure two of the states, I can't use full state feedback. So instead what we do is we build an observer to estimate the states, then feedback the state estimates. So the first problem is come up with a stabilizing feedback control law. Uh, this is the separation principle. How you come up with the control law is completely independent of how you come up with the observer. So if I want 2% settling time of 10 seconds, 10% overshoot, input the A matrix, B matrix, uh, using pole placement, I want to put the dominant pole right here. Let me just beep for some reason. Not whatever I beep for. Uh, put the dominant pole at minus 0.33 plus J.46. Uh, the complex conjugate and the other two poles are kind of arbitrary. I just put them at minus 2, minus 3, get them out of the way. Do that, I have my four feedback gains, Kx and Kr. I can now check. For the linear system, I can check the step response. The closed loop system, the A matrix becomes A minus BKX. The B matrix is B times KR. Uh, C and D, I'm just looking at the position X. Uh, plot the step response to a step input, so R equals 1. My initial conditions are 0 at the time points. And here's what it looks like. So everything looks fine. 10% overshoot, settling time's good. I can check that in the nonlinear simulation. Go into the cart program. Um, ignore the observer for now. Yeah. I've got my position, starts at minus 1. I've got my Kx, Kr. My feedback control law, uh, line 22, is Kr times R minus Kx times X. Do the cart dynamics. Ignore 24 for now. Ignore 27. And simulate. And here's what it looks like. So there's my step response. I tell it to go to minus, go to plus one. There's your 10% overshoot. Comes back. And just for fun, tell it to go to minus. One. There's my 10% overshoot. Comes back. So that's my full state feedback. Line 22, I'm using X rather than my model. Uh, everything looks good. Now, assume I can only measure position and angle come up with an observer? Well, this is a problem because I've got two sensors. Essentially, it's like a control law with two inputs. I don't know what to do with two inputs. I know what to do with one. That's pole placement. I don't know what to do with two. So one option is to throw one out. Um, but make sure it's still observable. Turns out you're not observable from angle. You are observable from position. So I'm going to make my C matrix uh, position. That's one zero zero. I'm measuring position, ignoring angle. I've got that measurement, but I don't do with it, so ignore it. With that, I can find my observer. Put the observer poles wherever you want. I chose minus one, minus one point two, one point four, one point six. About three times faster than the plant. Gives you H. That's actually H transpose. Here we go. That's H. And as a check, the eigenvalues of A minus H C are where I put them. Okay, so everything looks good. Uh, now, have the observer following the plant. I'm still using the full state feedback from the plant, but the observer is just going to watch what's happening. In that case, the closed loop system becomes A minus BKX. I'm feeding back the plant states right here. Here's the observer, A minus HC. And that comes over here on the left. You can kind of get that from the black diagrams on um, the XE dot right here is minus HC, draw, draw, here we go, minus HC times XE, I got a minus sign somewhere, minus sign goes down here, A minus HC, uh, for this guy, plus hc times x. Okay. 
and as a check, you can, oftentimes you get sign errors, check the eigenvalues of your resulting 8x8 system. Four poles for the plant, four for the observer. What I should get is the four poles from problem set, problem number one. Draw. Come on. Arr. Putting with my screen here. Come on, puppy dog. There you go. I should get the eigenvalues from pole placement, eigenvalues for the observer. Being upper triangular, uh, they don't interact. Um, for the C matrix, I'm going to look at position and angle, observer position, observer angle, and my initial condition, they're all the same. That's this guy. Take the step response and everything looks fine. If I change the initial condition on the observer, the observer is a little bit squirrely initially, but then tracks. I can see that in the nonlinear simulation as well. Uh, here on line 24, I've got the observer dynamics. Xe is my state estimator. Is Ae times Xe plus Ve times U. Whatever you do to the plant, do the same thing to the observer. Plus H, that's my observer gain, times the difference between position and the estimated position. Then line 26, integrate the plant. Line 27, integrate the observer. And then display the plant and the observer. So the cart display is slightly modified. I've got two outputs where the plant really is, where I think it is. And my initial conditions, if the initial condition is the same as the plant, it should work. And note that on line 22, I'm feeding back the actual position. So the observer is just there along for the ride, just what kind of watching what's happening. The error starts at zero, and it pretty much stays zero. That's with no difference between the observer states and the plant states. If there's a slight difference in the observer states, let's do that. Then initially the pink in the background is the observer. There's initial error that's quickly driven to zero, by the observer gain h. Okay, so everything looks fine. The acid test is problem four. If I can't measure the states, I can't feed them back. I do know what these observer states are. So feed back the observer rather than the plant. You see this block diagram. And again, I got a minus sign wrong. I can go fix that. Minus sign goes down here. Uh, the closed loop dynamics become this. The kx is times the second column, times xe, not x. And MATLAB, put everything together, take the step response. And if there's no error in the state, observer states, it tracks fine. Initially, if there is a slight error, I get kind of a wild response. That's the first transient, the first step response is a little bit off because the observer states are wrong. With full state feedback, I'm feeding back bad information. You know, no guarantees what happens. For the nonlinear simulation, what happens is you just change one line of code here. Instead of feeding back the position, feed back the estimate. And if the observer error starts at zero, Basically, the plant is the same as the observer. Mathematically, it makes no difference. If x is equal to xe, feedback either one. It's the same number, same input. I am now controlling the curtain inverted pendulum using only position measurements. If I have a error in the observer initially, the first transient is going to be a little bit wild. Oops, in fact, there went unstable. Ah, come back, come back. Let 
Let's make this smaller. Uh, where am I? Let's make that 0.01. Make it smaller. We get a little wild initial transient. That's the observer feeding back bad estimates, which then changes the output, which causes kind of weird transient. Transient might be odd. Once it converges, I ought to get my 10% of And the, that 0.01, that depends upon the observer. The bigger the observer gains, the more sensitive it is to initial errors. So that is homework set number eight for ECE 463, uh, designing of observers.